In this video, we're going to see some basic mathematical operations to help us on a daily basis to solve practical problems, but we can also see some basic stuff, such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And we also can see how to do a fraction or a exponentiation in Excel. But let's start first with the base stuff, that is, a addition. As we can see, I have two sets of values, the column B and the column C. Let's say I want to add the number or the number within the column B to the number within the column C, one number to another. I can first of all start with the equals sign. It's always important to use the equals sign in Excel whenever you are doing a formula, a function, or any other operation. Equal sign is very important. And then I can input here the first number that I need, that is the number one, and then add to plus sign the number one. If I hit enter, I already gonna have here the correct result. But let's do it again because I need to fill in all those rows with the addition of those numbers. But instead of manually do it all over again, I can use now a dynamically selection, let's say. Equal sign and I don't want to do it manually all over again, input the numbers. I want to click over the cell where I have the numbers at because it's much easier. So take a look here, instead of using the number 12 manually, I can click over the cell where I have the number 12 and then add to the number 17. If I hit enter, I'm going to have the same result as we have here before, however, with different numbers, right? Uh, but uh, the interesting thing here is whenever I have a dynamically selection or when I select a range instead of manually input the numbers, if you click at the bottom right corner of the cell, hold and drag down, you can see that you can copy this formula down and the range is going to follow along and uh, it's going to be moved down so that way you can have all the numbers being used within your formula so this is why it's very important to know the difference between using a number manually input within the formula or using a range in excel uh, such as a cell another thing that you can do here in the addition you can keep adding different numbers so let's say i'm adding here 12 to 17 but I also want to add another number. So plus sign the other number, plus sign another number, plus sign, and on and on. So this is how we can keep adding numbers. You just need to separate them with the plus sign. And if you hit enter, you're going to have the result automatically update for you. But let's now go to the subtraction. Equal sign, again, do not forget the equal sign is very important. And the only difference between the addition, the subtraction, the multiplication, and the division in Excel is the symbol that you need to use, is the logical operator. To do a addition, we can use the plus sign. To do a subtraction, we can use the minus sign or the hyphen. So let's say I want to use one minus one. Simple as that. And then I can hit enter. Okay, I'm going to have the result zero. Okay, it's correct. Now let me bring this formula down. And I'm done. So those are all the correct results for the difference between one number to another. Moving now to the third operation, multiplication, equal sign. Now we're going to have the asterisk, asterisk to multiply two, three, four, or whatever the quantity of numbers that you need to multiply. So let's stick with the first one times the second one and then enter. Let me bring this formula down. And the way we can have the correct result for all the rows. Now, the last mathematical formula that we can see here is the division. So, equal sign and the division, we can use the forward slash. Forward slash. The first number divides by the second one. And then hit enter. Let me bring this formula down. And we're done with the division for all the rows. And as we can see, there is a lot of results that has a that have a different quantity of decimal places. Maybe here we can have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven decimal places. But uh, let's take another number right here, such as this one. Here we have no decimal places at all. We have a whole number, a integer. Something that you can also do here with Excel is change the quantity of decimal places that you like to display in the number, in the result. So let me select everything that I have, and then I can go to the Home tab and just underneath this general option, you can increase or decrease the decimal places. Let me decrease the decimal places. 
to a whole number, for example. So I have no decimal places at all within my result. And if I increase the decimal places, I can increase the, pre the precision of the result, right? So I want to keep up with four decimal places. But if you want to use a different uh, number, a different quantity, you can do so. Now let's move on before we go to the theoretical problem where we're going to need to find the total sold, the quantity sold, the average sale price, and uh, the total gross profit where we have a bunch of data to be used in the formula. We can see uh, the fractions and also the exponentiation first. So let's go now for the fractions. Let's say I want to add some fractions such as equal sign, be mindful, equal sign. And then the fraction that I would like to use is 1 over 2, add 2, 3 over 4. Well, what is the result for this calculation? I don't know. So let me hit enter. And Excel is going to retrieve the correct result, 1.25. However, something that you can also change here, as we did learn before, we can change the decimal places to increase the, pre the preciseness of the result. We can also transform the number into a fraction. So let's do it. I want to select this specific number right here and then i can go to the home tab here in general i can click and go to more numbers for mass i want to stick with fraction and then up to three digits i'm gonna hit ok and as we can see i have here now the result however in a fraction format now let's move on to another example we did before a addition of two fractions if you want to include another fraction here you just need to separate those fractions with the addition symbol or the plus sign. So let's say add two, five over two, and then enter. I'm gonna have the, the, the correct result. So let's now go to the subtraction. Equal sign, let's say I want to have one over two minus 10 over nine minus, okay, I think it's enough. And then I'm gonna hit enter. I'm gonna have my negative 1.611111 and on and on. And I can also change the result into a fraction for map. So let me select all the cells that I have within this column. And I want to format all as a fraction. Because it's easier instead of manually do it all over again. Fraction and then up to three digits. Okay, so yeah, that's it. Uh, negative 11 over 18. Now let's do a multiplication. And with the multiplication and with the division, we need to be very mindful because... When we are doing a multiplication or a division in Excel, those operations are, are the ones that Excel is going to do first. So let's say, as we did before, if I have 1 over 2, add 2, 1 over 2, let's say. If, what Excel is going to do first? First, Excel is going to do uh, divisions. And then it's going to take the result of the first division and the second one and add up those values together. This is what Excel is going to do. So the division is more important than the subtraction or the addition. So this is why Excel is going to do this operation first. And the same thing applies when you are doing a multiplication. So let's say uh, 2 times 2 add, uh, add to 3 times 4. Excel is going to do first the multiplication, going to have the result, and then it's going to add up to the second result. But when we need to do, let's say, a addition or a multiplication of fractions because now we're going to have division and also multiplication within the same formula. How can we do it? Because let's say 1 over 2 multiplied by 2 over 3. If I just let this operation like this, Excel doesn't know what he needs to do first. If he needs to do first the division or if he needs to do the multiplication between 2 by 2 or on and on. So something that is important here is to use the open parentheses and then close parentheses to separate the operations, to separate the fractions that you have. Because that way Excel knows that first he needs to do the values, the operations in between parentheses before uh, Excel moves to the second operation. Let me also include here a open parentheses and then close parentheses. Now let me hit enter and I'm going to have the correct result. Uh, the division can work in, in the same way. So equal sign, open parentheses, let's say 4 over 3, close parentheses, divide by open parentheses, 1 over 2, close parentheses. And then I'm going to hit enter. Yeah, that's it. Now let's do some exponentiation here. 
just before we move on to the predicate example. So I have the base and also the exponent. And for this calculation, I want to use the circumflex symbol to help me uh, use a number to the power of another. So this to the power of another is we can use the circumflex sign to help us. Equal sign two, that is the base, to the power of three. And then I can hit enter. I'm gonna have eight as a result. And of course, two times two, three times is equal to the number eight, right? Uh, equal sign, and then two to the power of four, and then enter, and on and on. Let me bring this formula down, and we're done. So these are the results. Now we can move on to the predicate example because we already learned uh, a lot of things about basic mathematical formulas in Excel. But when we have a larger data set, such this sales report that I have with a bunch of different columns and rows, maybe we can have a problem because let's say, how can I add up a lot of values together? How can I multiply a lot of values? Because if I do it manually, row by row, number by number, it's going to take a long time. So Let's find out a, a way to do these mathematical operations in a easier way and faster too. So let's say the first thing that I need is the total sold, the addition of everything that I sold. First of all, I have as the information, the date, the product name, the quantity sold, the unit price, and the total price, everything are blank. So to have the total price is just a simple math that we need to do. That is a multiplication between the unit price and the quantity. If I have the unit price and I multiply the unit price by the quantity, of course, I'm going to have the total price. And then I can take all those values and add up everything together. And that way I'm going to have the total sold. So let's do it. Equal sign, equal sign, quantity times the unit price. And then I'm going to hit enter. Okay, let me bring this formula down. Click, hold, and drag, or you can double click at the bottom right corner of the cell. One, two, yeah, that's it. And just to check if it's correct, I can go maybe to this row right here because I have a easier number, such as 10. And if I change the quantity to the number 10 to 10 times 10 is equal to 100. So let's see if it's correct. Enter. Yeah, okay. Now I have 100 in the total price. It's correct. Now let's move on to the question itself. Total sold. How can we answer this question? Equal sign. If we do here what we did learn before, equal sign, the first value, add to the second one, add to the third one, add to the fourth one, and on and on, until the ending of the spreadsheet, we're going to take a long time to complete this test. However, Excel has a function that can help us with addition. That is the equal sign sum function to add up a entire data set, a entire range. So let me double click in this function, one, two, to select. And then the only thing that I need to do is select either a specific range like this, or I can click over the column P to select the entire column. And that's it. Now I can hit enter. And this is the total sold. I can also right click in the cell and change the format to a dollar currency like this. Now to do the quantity sold, we can do something similar, equal sign some function. Double click one, two, but this time I need to use the, the quantity column. So let me click over the column N and then I can hit enter. 313, uh, the total quantity sold. Now, if I want to do the average sales price, maybe we can manually use a formula such as equal sign and I can open parentheses to tell Excel that I need to have this operation, this calculation. Uh, first, that is the addition of all the total prices that I have. And then with this addition, I can divide the result by the quantity. So let's say 313. However, as we can clearly see, I need to select all the cells that I have to make the addition of all the values and then to make the division by 313. However, instead of manually do this task, I can automate this problem with the equal sign and then the average function. So yeah, Excel also has the average function to help us with larger problems, such as this one that I have. Let me double click in this function, one, two, and the range that I want to consider in the average 
is the total price. And again, I can either use a small range like this or click over the letter P to select the entire channel. Let me hit enter. And 64 and 63, rounding up. This is the average sales price. Let me right click in this value and then I can transform into the dollar currency. Okay. Now, the last thing that I want to do here is the total gross profit. However, to have the gross profit, I need to uh, take the difference between the total price minus the total cost. I don't have the total cost yet, so I need to calculate it. Equal sign the unit cost times the quantity and then enter. Okay. Let me bring this formula down, one, two. And now I can calculate the gross profit. And the gross profit is just a simple math. That is the total price minus the total cost. Equal sign, total price minus total cost. Enter. Let me bring this formula down, one, two. And yeah, now I can go here and answer the last question. Equal sign, what is the total gross profit? Equal sign, sum, function, double click, one, two and then select all the values that I have within the gross profit column. Close parentheses and then enter. Yeah, that's it. 8077.15. So this is how we can use those basic mathematical formulas and functions in Excel. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions or any suggestions to the next videos, let me know. Comment down below and I see you tomorrow as every day has a new video. I see you there.